in order for us to become a ever more brilliant partner for our dogs and with our dogs, the kind of partner that our dog needs, the kind of partner that that will help us to feel happier so that we we have like a happier life, right? We want to think about taking responsibility for our actions, our thinking, our flexibility, you know, all the things, right? Hi, I'm Kathy Kowalik, and I believe that our dogs connect us to the heart and soul of what really matters in life. So hang out, and we'll take a deep dive into the human-dog connection and explore strategies that will inspire you to create legendary, enlightened partnership with your dog. This is the Enlightened by Dogs podcast. Well, hello, my friends, Kathy Kowalik here, your host of the Enlightened by Dog Show, where we dive into all things partnership with our amazing dogs. So yeah, so today I'm going to share with you um, a couple of my, I don't know, principles, lifestyle principles that really make a difference, a big difference in accelerating our uh, journey to become brilliant partners for and with our dogs. And that's why we're here, right? There are so many factors that influence how we think, how we feel, and how we respond in any situation, right? Like our past experiences, our expectation uh, of ourselves and our dogs, our goals, our self-image, our level of experience, like expectations that others have for us, like our peers, our community. All these things affect how we interact with our dog, even when we're not aware of it, right? A lot of times this is completely subconscious. And in order for us to become a ever more brilliant partner for our dogs and with our dogs, the kind of partner that our dog needs, the kind of partner that will help us to feel happier so that we we have like a happier life. We want to think about taking responsibility for our actions, our thinking, our flexibility, you know, uh, all the things, right? And over the years, I've studied, I've practiced, I've committed, studied and practiced some more to be able to manage my own thinking, my own mental state, which of course is influenced by our programming, our belief system, which comes from our habits and our cultural conditioning, all that, right? And that, of course, leads to how we feel and how we feel leads to the actions that we take or the so our our actions, our reactions or our inactions, <laughs> you know, like maybe we don't do anything. This is just a, a continual state of evolution, personal evolution, you know, for myself and for all of us, whether we're doing it consciously and mindfully or not. And it's, uh, it certainly, I do my best to make this an intentional practice where I'm expanding into a better version of myself every year, uncovering my own inner brilliance, because I think we already have everything that we need to be brilliant inside of us, just kind of like peeling off layers, blossoming into that better version of ourselves. And certainly is a lifetime pursuit, maybe multiple lifetimes, depending on your belief system. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to share with you a couple of things that that have helped me over the years and continue to help me. And I hope they help you too. And so one of the uh, strategies or principles that I look at or look to or live by, if you will, is 
cultivating an optimistic outlook. And I like to say that it's basically is learning how to be more like my dogs. <laughs> right? And I think this is one of the most important things because when we have an optimistic outlook as our starting place, I mean, everything sort of gets better, right? I mean, people who carry an optimistic outlook are typically healthier, happier, more productive. They catch fewer colds. They cope better with life's daily struggles and they even live longer, right? I mean, studies prove that it pays to have an optimistic outlook in life. And fortunately for all of us, <laughs> optimism is a skill that can be learned. And so here's three ways that I have found can help us to cultivate an optimistic perspective or an opti optimistic approach to life. And so the first thing is that we can respect ourselves and our dogs for who we are, right? In other words, don't judge yourself or your dog against some set of made up, probably unrealistic set of ideals. You know what I mean? And instead of that, hold on to the belief that you and your dog are always good enough, perfect enough, just the way you are, even as you grow and expand into a wiser, stronger, more brilliant version of yourselves. And the next thing is to know and, and accept and expect that life is a series of ups and downs. I mean, just because you're optimistic doesn't mean that you're not going to have bad days. We all will. That's just the reality of life you know, like an ocean wave, like rising up and then crashing down, right? I mean, life's ups and downs are just natural. It's a natural part of the process, right? The ups require the downs, right? And when we can be at peace with this, it just makes life so much better, right? It's like we want to prepare for the downs and capitalize on the ups, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then the, the, the next thing is to, to kind of cultivate a practice of seeking and seeing and finding and using all of our available options. An optimist or an optimistic outlook puts us into the place of believing in the optimal usage of all available options, no matter how limited the supply, right? I mean, even if we only can find one thing that we can start from, like one little tiny baby step that gives us the opening, right? That's all we need, right? And as a result of looking for any and all available options, it enables us to see like the bigger picture and more and allows us to like, I don't know, better visualize and manage the possibilities that are present, right? Rather than look at our limited options or our limited possibilities, we're able to start to see what is possible, even if it's only one small thing right now, you know what I mean? And so this helps us to really visualize what is possible. And that opens up all sorts of new doorways. And that leads me to the next principle that I think is really important. And that is to use our brains in all of their power, it's like, whoa, really amazing. To imagine, so use our imagination to create a picture or a movie, if you will, of the result or the outcome that we desire. Instead of using our amazing brains and imaginations to visualize something that we don't want or what might, what terrible thing might happen or, you know what I mean? Let's not 
use our brains to imagine something that we don't want, flip that around and use it to visualize something that we do want. And so having that, that optimistic and positive outlook helps us to use our brains, you know, for, for, uh, creating the kind of life that we want. That makes sense. And, and so every time that you're able to vividly picture or visualize you and your dog doing something well, you are creating sort of a preset or a program in your mind, in your, into your self image that greatly improves the chances that you will actually act that way in the future. And so presets or, you know, uh, uh, like self in the way the story we tell about ourselves, what we believe that we're capable of. And, and so whether you know it or not, you do have an opinion about what you and your dog can and cannot do. And you're like, really, that's oftentimes just not that correct or accurate, right? So like you might say things like, oh, my dog and I have trouble with distance work, or I always get tense and frustrated because my dog doesn't listen, you know, in this particular environment or circumstance, right? And so that would be us having a a self-image that isn't accurate. Well, it it can be accurate if that's what we hold on to, right? But we can turn that around, right? Because the amazing thing is that our mind doesn't really recognize the difference between a quote unquote real experience or an imagined experience, right? And so the fact that our brains work like this can help us to imprint into our minds or to create a program or to paint a picture of who we believe we are and what we're capable of, you know, in a new way that will help us to be what we envision that we want to be, because we can't actually have an experience that is not aligned with what we believe is possible, right? And so using our imaginations to like, uh, uh, run that program in our minds helps our minds to see ourselves and our dogs in that new way. It's like we have to become that person that is that brilliant partner that, that is able to support our dog in that new way in before we can do it. You know what I mean? Cause if we don't believe we can, then that's, true. You know what I mean? Then we will, we, we, we won't be able to do that. Right. And so our, our mind is, is so powerful and, and we want to use it in our, to our advantage. Right. And so we can change our self image that we live up to by using our imagination to visualize who we want to become and what we want to do and what we're capable of doing, right? So instead of saying or believing that, well, my dog and I have trouble with distance work, you'll visualize you and your dog working at a distance with excellence over and over. That's, that's what, that's the, the movie that you're going to be running in your mind. And then you'll be able to tell a new and true story. My dog and I are becoming excellent at distance work, right? Instead of saying, I always get tense and frustrated because my dog doesn't listen when we go for a walk or whatever, you will visualize you and your dog as fluid partners. You, you'll visualize yourself as calm and focused and enjoying every moment with your dog. And you'll visualize this over and over until you have a new and true story, right? That I feel so great because my dog and I are becoming so closely partnered and there's nothing we can't do together. We are becoming brilliant partners, right? And that is what you will live up to, right? If that's what you visualize about yourself, your brain will help you live up to that in the moment. Does that make sense? Right? And and the other part of that is managing 
the quality of your participation in your life's experiences. I mean, you know, sometimes we get thrown a curveball. I mean, we don't often have answers like to why things happen or why our dogs do what they do or whatever, why we do what we do, or for example, or what's going to happen next. You know what I mean? You know, we can have a plan, we can, you know, lay things out and, 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 and be prepared for different experiences. You know, we can follow the safe, calm and happy protocol. We can employ the 95% rule and still we can fa- we can find ourselves facing unexpected challenges along the way right i mean we can't always control all aspects of life uh nor should we even try right and so what we want to do is to stay connected with the plan that we had made with the the uh, the protocols and the processes that we had created for ourselves and and stay with that and stay connected with that no matter what happens right because what actually happens isn't as important as what you do how you respond to what happens that is what is really important so for example Let's say that you have a plan and you have a process for you and your dog to win a a podium award for in, in your favorite dog sport, right? And so you do, you train, you condition, you practice, you get coaching, you know, you do all the things, right? You do all the right stuff and you're well prepared, right? And so you and your dog go to compete at the big event, And instead of winning the gold medal, which you had visualized, you end up in fifth place, right? Which you would surmise is below your true potential, right? And certainly, well, not bad, right? Um, It's quite an accomplishment, but it wasn't exactly what you were visualizing. And so this scenario puts you into a position of, managing your response, right? Managing the quality of your participation in this experience. And so if you stay connected with your plan and your process, instead of feeling sorry for yourself, feeling disappointed in your performance or your dog's performance, whatever, you now see that you have an opportunity to learn so much more. You're now hungry to be even better, to be the best you can be, to learn more, to be a learner, to be better than you are right now today, right? And this drive, right, to expand, to become a better version of yourself to blossom, to un, unpeel some more layers, to reveal a greater brilliance, a greater, you know, human being, right? This drive would not happen if you had taken the gold. And so chances are that you may have felt satisfied if you air, these are air quotes, like knew it all, right? And as a result, you would actually be leaving part of your dream or even part of your untapped potential behind, right? And perhaps it's a part you don't even know about yet, something even bigger than you have yet imagined is possible. You know what I mean? Like, how cool is that? And so it's just one of those aspects that we can tap into and explore about ourselves. And I think another piece of this that I'll share with you, it's kind of like a, like an offshoot of that, of, you know, managing our participation, right, is to remember that we can measure success with attainment, not just accomplishment. 
I mean, the world tends to measure accomplishments. And so that means we do as well, right? Because that's our cultural conditioning. So accomplishment is how we measure the external. The external is easier to measure, right? We earn this title. My dog knows, you know, 10 cool tricks. We won this big event. My dog is now a canine good citizen. Um, you know, we were able to do le- loose leash walking for a 30 minute walk with, uh, in an area where we had prior triggers, you know what I mean? So, like that's easy to measure external things, but there's another measurement that is crucial to our success and it's called becoming. Becoming is how we measure the internal. And it's much more difficult to measure. And it's oftentimes something that is neglected, something we don't even think about, right? And so who we become as a result of sharing our life with dogs is what brings true satisfaction, true pleasure, true happiness. Becoming is the measure of your character and your growth as a human being. To be able to say, I've become a better partner for my dog. I've become more understanding of my dog's experiences. I've become more compassionate and more patient with my dog. I am now able to see my dog is perfect even as she grows into a better version of herself. That is becoming. Attainment is the combination of your becoming and your accomplishing. It's a balanced blend of the internal and the external. And that, my friends, is what brilliant partners strive for. And that is what I want for you. This is what I strive for in my life. Reaching for this balance, seeking this balance, and always, always, always considering who do I choose to become? Who do I seek to become? Who is that human that I want to be, that I know is going to experience my dog and my lifestyle and a brilliant partnership with my dog that grows and expands beyond my wildest imagination every year. I'm going to leave you with that, my friends, that thought. I'd love to hear your, your uh, take on this, your insights how this has impacted you in your life, leave a comment and uh, that's it. So go off and be brilliant and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening. And hey, if you would like to work with me so that I can help you discover the missing pieces you need so that you and your dog can finally be happy and enjoy life together, then head on over to DancingHeartsDogAcademy.com and request your invitation to join us in the Brilliant Partners Academy when the doors open for the next enrollment. See you next time. And remember, a brilliant partnership with your dog makes your whole life brilliant.